The Astra Militarum have suffered greatly at the hands of the Butcher and his legion. Even the fabled Yarek seems to have fallen to the Red Angel. The Cadians know what loss feels like, they know the sting of the great enemy, and look to gather a small measure of payback. World leaders, Astra Militarum, this is 40k in 40 minutes. Vengeance for Armageddon! <laughs> 40k fans, your host JT McDowell here, and boy howdy do we have a matchup for you today. Veteran Guardsman Nick takes on World Eaters aficionado Mubin as he unveils the new World Eaters Codex. Hey everyone, Mubin, I'm back again, facing against Nick's Imperial Guard, back for some vengeance, but this time I'm bringing something new. I'm bringing the World Eaters. The list that Mubin's brought today definitely feels like the World Eaters. He's got Karn, the new character Lord Invocatus on a Juggernaut, a demon prince with wings and an axe, and the relic Helm of Brazen Ire, some jackals with a skull smasher, three five-man berserker squads, each with an icon and eviscerator, oh, I love two-handed chainswords, a squad of exalted eight-bound, a brand new unit for world eaters, one lonely chaos spawn, a lord of skulls with a skull hurler and gore storm cannon, and of course, the big bad red angry Ron himself, Angron the Red Angel. Since I got into Warhammer, there has actually been only three factions that really spoke to me, and one of them happened to be World Eaters, and I've been waiting, waiting for Angron to get a model. And now, he's here, and we get to kill, maim, burn. Hey guys, Nick here, and I'm back with the Tau. Oh, sorry, not Tau, sorry, Imperial Guard, woo! Already off to a bad start. Nick has brought another detachment of born soldiers. He's got a Cadian command squad, a tank commander with Lehman Russ Relic Battle Cannon. They're leading two squads of Cadian Shock Troops and one infantry squad, a three-man squad of Bulgrins, a Commissar, some Kazarkin. Look for him to use the Kazarkin Bomb, as it's been called, an absolutely devastating combination of stratagems, an Armored Sentinel, a Hellhound with an Inferno Cannon, what used to be called a Bane Wolf, two Lehman Russ Battle Tanks, both with Battle Cannons, a Stormlord, and the new Rogaldorn Battle Tank. Oh boy, this thing has got guns on top of guns on top of guns. I'm dubbing this episode, Mubin Tries Again. Let's, last time I was able to eke out a win against his Tyranids, but this time he's coming with a brand new army, the World Eaters, and they're scary. Angron, absolutely ridiculous. The model is gorgeous. The stat line is insane. Angron is just frightening. He dishes out so many attacks and it doesn't matter what I throw at it. I think no matter what Angron goes in, it's gonna kill. Kill, maim, burn. Today's matchup is an Arcs of Omen battle. We're playing conversion from the Arcs of Omen rulebook at 2,000 points. Players will need to hold one objective for four points, two objectives for four more, and hold more than their opponent to score four more to a maximum of 12 per turn. They can also hold their opponent's objective for four points, hold any other objective for two points, and should they lose their home objective, they actually lose a victory point. All this to a maximum of 15 per turn and 45 per game. For secondaries, Nick has chosen Inflexible Command, an Astra Militarum secondary that requires his units to maintain some semblance of coherency, Assassination, scoring points for killing Mubin's characters, and he's got four of them, Boots of the Ground, an Astra Militarum secondary that will score him points for having platoons in multiple quarters. Mubin has taken Bring It Down, scoring points by killing Nick's vehicles, and he sure does have a lot of them, Pile the Skulls, a World Eater's specific secondary that will let him spend Blood Tithe points to turn into Victory points, Retrieve Octarius, Retrieve Nachman, Retrieve Nephilim, now it's just Battlefield data. One wouldn't think that's a great choice for a close combat army, however, with Berserker icons and their new Blood Surge rule, World Eaters can do actions just as well as anyone and still keep closing on units. We're gonna do this, the World Eaters will have their blood and they will have their skulls for core. This game is brought to you by Game Mat EU. We are pleased as always to have Game Mat EU on board for this episode sponsor. Game Mat EU has everything you need to set the battlefields of your dreams. We love their pre-painted terrain as well as their incredibly detailed game mats as they're ready to go right out of the box. However, they have so much more to offer. MDF colored terrain, mouse pad terrain, even 3D print files so you can make your own. Whatever your pleasure, Game Mat EU has you covered. Check out the link in the description, and as always, make sure to tell them Play On sent you. 
Welcome back to the arena, and you've brought an arena challenger, the the arena challenger, the Lord of the arena. Yeah, uh, Angron is here, and he's scary. He's really scary. I, he's I'm great. actually very terrified of him. He basically kills anything he wants to. Pre-game here, it looks like the Exalted Eight Bound are going to be in Warp Strike, which is the World Eater's version of a Deep Strike. Nick starts the game with two command points, and Movin starts with four. And let's see who gets to deploy first. Oh, looks like it's you. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna deploy first and choose this side right here. So I'm gonna start off all nice and mighty and put my giant tank down first. Ooh. I'm placing my swarm lord with this Vulcan mega boulder. I'm actually gonna start off with a unit of jackals. Jackals, that's a new unit, isn't it? That is a shiny new unit, exclusive to the world eaters. It's their version of cultists, and they're nice and angry. Deployment isn't as key this time because. Mubin doesn't have a lot of heavy shooters, so I can be pretty free with my deployment as long as I'm staying far enough back. I need to make sure I have line of sight on his stuff. I'm not so worried about the incoming fire. My Sentinel, we'll put him over here. A squad of new Berserkers. Another squad of Berserkers. Another squad of Berserkers. All right, so this Commissar right here, this this was Yarek's protege, and he is here for revenge against Angron because the rumor, the scuttlebutt, is that Angron is the one that actually killed Yarek. There is a skull right on the front Do you mean of him. That one right there. It really looks like that might be the skull of Yarek, and so we're gonna go with that. And this guy right here, he needs a kick-ass name. He needs to earn his name. He needs to earn his name. So he doesn't have a name yet, but this Commissar needs a name. We'll see how he does today. We'll see what he does today. I'm going to start with another one of the new models here. And I'm going to put down Lord Invocatus. Or as you like to call him, Lord Avocado. We're going to hook my custom Hellhound here Ooh. with a chem cannon. The Lord of Skulls. I don't like this thing. I love it. It's such a great model. Look at all those skulls on him. And then I've got a unit of Kassergen that are going to go deploy very deep in my lines because they're going to pick up and deploy at a future point. Let's go with another squad of Berserkers here. These ones are going to go right back here. My company command squad is gonna go way back here as well, behind the tank. None other than Karn the Betrayer himself. Piling up with all of his buddies. All right, I've got a unit of Bulgrin. They're gonna hold the line by the Commissar. Right here, just kinda like. This is gonna be the World Eater's Demon Prince going down on this side here. I have the Rogel Dawn tank. It lights up. Hey. Ba 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 boom. I mean, if we're talking about a lack of bottom plates, Right? <laughs> little chaos spawn. Little chaos spawn. Just a little chaos spawn. Yeah. Little chaos spawn. You're just gonna join the rest of them over here. All right, I've got one unit of guardsmen, just regular, regular old guardsmen that they're gonna hide as much as they can, as far away as they can from all the nasty. All the big angries. All the big angries that are coming. And last, but definitely not least, the Lord of the Arena himself. <laughs> just right on the edge of the deployment zone. And I'm done deploying. Nice. My Vanquisher Cannon is back again for glory. Let's see if he can do some damage this turn once again. He's gonna go over here. And then I've also got my Plasma Lehman Rust. It's gonna go over here. Just a big parking lot. Oh, absolutely. And then I've got a unit of infantry. They're gonna deploy over here. A unit of Cadian Shock Troopers that are gonna go on the line over here. And I got one more unit of Cadian Command Squad to deploy to protect the tanks. In a sacrificial meat shield deployment, classic deployment line to protect the tanks. Do you want to go first or oh, second? I absolutely want to go first. Really? I need to go first because I need to play this aggressively. I need to get Angron into his ranks and I'm going to make it so that he can't fall back if I'm in combat with him. So I lock myself into his back lines and he's stuck. He can't shoot me and he's stuck fighting me. This is just what I want. Ah! Yeah, into the box. Five. Yes. Oh, I really, really wanted to go first. I've got a lot of guns and he's got hardly any. It would have been a perfect opportunity to try to whittle down his forces before they got to me. Good luck, sir. Bring it on. Round two. Movement starts his command phase by Angron using his Lord of the Arena ability to give himself rerolls. He's choosing his Wrathful Presence this turn, and Movement's choosing Righteous Slaughter. That means nobody's going to be able to fall back within six inches of Angron, friend or foe. 
If Ankron gets into that row of tanks now, it could be a real quick game over for him. This is gonna be painful. Nick ticks up to three command points and Moobin goes up to five. So moving, charge at me. Angron, like I said, he's going right up the board. He's gotta make that charge with him, get him into combat. I know he's gonna kill whatever he touches, but that's what the pilot and consolidates for. So get him right out there. I'm going to spread out along the sides of the board for as much control as I can. He's just gonna trundle up. Merp. Demon Prince is gonna advance. Ooh. This unit of corn berserkers, they're gonna advance. Ooh. I'm gonna send Lord Invocatus off to the side. Going to hide him just to keep him out of range of the guns. Not worried about getting that objective yet, but I can hop onto it and if Nick pushes forward, I can retaliate and get him in there and just start getting some kills and racking up those blood tithe points. So these boys are just gonna scooch back just a little bit so they're completely within this quarter and they're going to retrieve data here. Spawn's just gonna creep along behind the Lord of Skulls. You have a Chaos Spawn? There's a Chaos Spawn in there. Karn's gonna advance. Oh, uh, a whopping one. He just looks cute. I don't know what you're talking about. Look at that, look at that little smiling face. He is absolutely murdery. Shooting phase. Shooting phase. Now this should be quick. Lord of Skulls. Uh, doesn't have anyone in range for his Gore Storm Cannon. Gore Storm Cannon! So he's just got the Skull Hurler. Shooting face now, and the Lord of Skulls takes a couple wounds of the Stormlord, but that's not what this army's all about. It's the charge and the fight phase, and Mubin needs to get in right now. I have 22 wounds remaining on this Stormlord. 22 wounds left. In to the charge <laughs> phase. Okay, what do you need to get here? This is the crazy thing here. So it looks like it's... Seven? About seven inches away. So looking for a nine because of the crater? If Angron makes this charge, I lock Nick in combat, and there's no more shooting for Nick into Angron, which would be huge. Dear Emperor, I know I haven't spoken to you as much as I have in the past, um, but if you could make Angron fail this this turn, I'd really appreciate it. Like, really appreciate it. We'll find out. Not with a seven. It's a failure? Command reroll. He failed the first one. Thank you. Um, if you make him fail this reroll, um, I, 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 I'll call Tau Fish. I'll, won't play Tau anymore. I will. The Emperor oh, protects. Uh oh. I needed a nine, not an eight. Wow, that's too bad that now I'm gonna shoot everything into him. He must die. I expect as much. But the, the scary thing is, even if I kill him, you can just bring him back. Well, he's gonna come back. <laughs> Boy, that was a quick turn one. Uh, if Moobin's gonna keep missing his charges, this game is gonna be over before it starts. He's managed to get one new objective, so that's gonna score him two on primary, and he's retrieved Nephilim data one time. He ends the turn with four command points, two victory points, to Nick's three command points and no victory points, but Nick hasn't gone yet. On to Nick's turn one. All right, my turn. He failed his charge. I've got a plethora of beautiful, beautiful guns to target and take down Angron. Moving at five command points, Nick at four. Nick issuing orders now. The Vanquisher gets Gunner's Kill on sight, and of course that travels through the platoons. He orders some of his troops to get first rank fire, second rank fire, overriding the Commissar orders that give out feel no pain. So specific units will have specific things. Boy, these orders can get complex. I'm gonna use the Barbican's key. It's a relic that allows me to pick up these Kastrigan and put them anywhere I want on the board, nine inches away from enemy units. So they're gonna pop down. Boom. Taking the objective. Then my Commissar is gonna say, show them steel, show them contempt, onto this unit of infantry right here, which gives them a five up ignore damage, which then cascades onto this unit, giving them a five up uh, ignore damage. It's time for a chem cannon to come try to kill these guys. Time to move. Nick really needs to bring the pain here. He needs to bring down big targets and absolutely decimate movement so he cannot close with them. The thing about Blood Surge, though, is even if he shoots a Berserker unit and doesn't kill it, it comes running at you. And the infantry here, these the infantry here, are gonna advance forward. Ooh. I'm trying to create a forward line. Try and keep me out. That you can't pile into my other guys. So six inches of movement because of the crater. The Bulgren are gonna move backwards a little bit. 
Okay, okay. We're gonna try to be like extra sneaky here as much as we can. My company command squad moves up just to be in range of all the Voxcasters to score my points. Let's go into the psychic phase and skip that. And then let's go into the shooting phase and murderize Angron. Chem Cannon into these guys right Not there. Not those poor berserkers. Uh, so Chem Cannon's D3 plus three shots. Oh, a full oh, six oh, shots. Oh, oh. Three, four. Looking for two. six automatically hits and wounds on twos. AP3 looking for sixes. Yeah. I made oh, three of that's them. That's three sixes. Two damage each. Yep, so that'll Each one kill the guy. Cool. And then the heavy bolter goes into you as well. And hits you once. Wounds you once at minus one. Yeah. Four up. He's okay. Got it. Excellent. Now that you're done shooting them, oh, right. on they a get D6, the, they get blood surge. They get to move an extra five inches closer. That's crazy. Okay, all these infantry right here are all gonna fire into these guys because they're touching the infantry. They can fire through the windows. Flamer hits uh, three times. Wounds you once with a flamer. Grenade. Six shots with a, with a frag grenade. Uh, wound you, a few wounds off. Wounds you three times with the frag. Uh, three. One wound for the flamers, and then a bunch of las guns. Two auto wounds. Uh, two wounds. They're okay. So before I go any further, I'm gonna go with these Kasserkin right here. I'm gonna do what's called the Kasserkin bomb. Mm, not this again. Not a bad idea to drop that caster kid bomb now. Nick uses overcharged last cells to make sixes to wound do mortals in addition to the regular damage. He's using ingrained precision so that fives to hit also count as sixes to wound. And he farms back one of the command points from his warlord trait, so he's still at three command points. I'm gonna spread, I'm gonna, the epitome of split fire because I can do up to six mortal wounds uh -huh. per unit I shoot at. So I'm gonna split their fire and I'm gonna shoot the two that can see into these guys here. Yep, because it's 24, right? Yep. Yeah, so those are the first two there. So that is six shots with them. Yep. And then two of them are gonna shoot at Angron. Okay. The remaining six are all gonna fire into the Demon Prince. The Cavs are gonna have brutal strength, so they're gonna suffer no penalty to hit moving their heavy weapons, which means he's hitting on threes. Um, six shots from two guys into these two lone two berserkers. Wounds. See if I can't kill them. Two wounds and a mortal wound. Yep. So a mortal wound is gonna kill the one automatically. Uh, I make one fail one, so the last one is down to a single wound left. Anger on. And they move three inches. They keep moving! <laughs> Two of them shooting at Angrons for six shots into Angron, hitting on threes. And uh, it's two, so two wounds and one mortal wound. Two saves and minus two. Uh, he makes one, fails one, so he'll take one damage from that and then one mortal wound. So he is down to, I'm going to need a big dice. He is down to 16 wounds. And then all of these are the Demon Prince. The mortal wounds haven't been doing well for me yet. Not yet. Oh, still oh. no good. Only two. Sixes. Six. Yeah. Nothing. Two wounds and two mortal wounds. Two saves, four ups. Uh, makes one, fails one. Okay, well that was largely disappointing. That was not as scary as I thought it would be. This is looking up already. Sentinel's gonna go into the Blown Berserker. It's gotta kill it. <laughs> All right, Sentinel Cannon, overcharging Plasma Cannon. Hits once. Okay. Wounds. Six up. Nope. Wow, that was a bit of a fail. Movement's lost one of the squad's Berserkers. However, he's gained a Blood Tide point. Well, let's keep, keep the shooting going. Got lots of shooting to do still. We're gonna go with the Vanquisher Cannon. Needs to redeem himself. Amazing. Big Giant Vanisher Cannon into Angron, plus the Heavy Bolter into Angron. Mm -hmm. One shot from the Vanquisher Cannon, hitting on a four, rerolling ones. No, hitting on threes, rerolling yeah. ones. Vanquisher targets Angron, hits and wounds, 11 damage. Whoa. And then the Heavy Bolter. He's okay. We're gonna go with the Storm Lord now. Okay. And he's gonna fire everything except for Laz Cannons. Ooh. The Laz Cannons are all gonna go across the board, because it's really the only thing I can see it, and shoot the Demon Prince. A weapon that should be on a Titan, a Reaver Titan, yep. uh, is gonna go into Angron, plus all the heavy bolters into Angron. Uh, Laz Cannons into the Demon Prince back yep. there. Threes. Wounded you twice. Four up involved. He's okay. Oh, no! Angron. Fives. I got one more. Oh, he fails two and they're two damage each? They're two damage each. Oh, that brings you out of one wound? 
The guardsmen open up an anger on only one auto wound, but that's all he needs. And movement saves. My Bulgrin are gonna fire all their grenade gauntlets. D6 shots, six, seven, eight, nine. The Bulgrin wound and movement fails. Command reroll down to four. Angron lives. Ah, oh, there you go. Time for the tank commander. <laughs> Looks like Nick's tired of fooling around. That battle cannon tank commander is gonna unload everything into Angron. He probably doesn't need it. Nope, he didn't. But movement's up to three blood tide points, and Angron is off the table. However, he's halfway to coming back. As long as I get six blood tide points, I can bring Angron back onto the field to just wreak more havoc. I killed some things. That feels you good. Killed a thing. Feels good. Feels good. This tank right here is gonna fire all of its shots into that demon prince. Try to finish it off. Overcharging his plasma cushion now into that demon prince, and it takes him down. That does put movement up to four blood tithe, though. Oh, yeah, clean up the board. And then um, the only weapon that's left is this Rogaldorn battle tank. Rogaldorn tank in the Lord of Skulls, stripping wounds off him like a boss. He took 11 wounds off it. It's down to 19. All right, I have no more targets to shoot at. You gonna charge? <laughs> no. Well, I gotta say, I feel like that was a great turn. I've managed to damage the Lord of Skulls, kill Angron, kill the Demon Prince, and kill that unit of Berserkers that was almost threatening my front line. I'm in a much stronger place than I came into this turn with, and I just gotta weather the incoming charges that I know are coming. And in turn one, sees a score of seven to two in favor of Nick. Both players have two points on primary. Nick has scored two on Inflexible Command, three on Assassination, one an eventful first turn. Mubin ran out in the open and Nick shot him sideways. However, Blood Tithe points means Angron can come back. This game is far from over. All right, start of turn two. Can I survive all the charges that are incoming? Ah, we'll see. Turn two. Nick has moved forward. He's brought more things closer, which means I'm going to start charging in and I'm going to start murdering things. This will be a bloody turn. Start of movement's turn two and he gains four points on primary to make our score seven to six. Command phase, he's got four blood tithe and five command points for movement. Nick goes up to four command points, had to make that roll of a four up in order to get it. New change to this mission. Lord of Skulls heals up one wound and now he wants skulls for the skull throne. So on to movement. So if I can just score two more Blood Tithe points in this round, I can put Angron into Warp Strike and bring him back on my turn three, which is gonna be huge. This one's actually gonna advance. Ooh, Ooh he's a fast beast. Inches. And zoom. They're just gonna move right up. So if I can string them out in case things go really badly. And then Invocatus on the other hand, he's gonna fly up to there. And because I can, and I like the idea of just pincering you in. Is this the eight? This is the exalted eight bound, and they are not staying out of this party. That concludes movement. Come, come at me, bro. Shooting. <laughs> because I've got some shooting to do. That pesky vanquisher cannon. Gotta do something about it. I think it's time to hurl some skulls at it. The Lord of Skulls opens up, splitting fire into the Karskin and the Vanquisher. So, start with these poor guys here, uh, looking for 3d3 shots into them. Looking for threes. On sixes. No, 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 this is into the... Fail mall. Skull Hurler, 2d6 shots into the Vanquisher. Movement spends a command point to reroll five shots at a nine, down to four remaining. Nine. Nine, that feels a bit better. That's better, it? that was worth it. Looking for threes. On fives, I save one. Seven wounds at AP three and three damage each. 18 wounds into that Vanquisher, takes it out, doesn't explode, so Nick gets to use Vengeful Salute with that Vanquisher cannon. <sighs> that Vengeful Salute is such a pain in my- Vengeful Salute, and I'm gonna fire right back at you. Just go bring for it. that vengeance, bring him down. All right, four up. <sighs> I'm still on Gunner's Kill on sight, so I still get to reroll ones. Give me the four. Bit of luck for Boobin there, and he scores six blood tithe points. Now Angron is ready to come back. Woof! <sighs> At least that salute failed. I live to fight another day. Well, I'm done my shooting. Okay, what do you want to charge? Everything. <laughs> I bet you do. Boobin's got a bunch of charges he needs to sink home here. The Lord of Skulls charges into the Kazarkin, and he fails. Lord of Nakatis. 
into those poor guardsmen. Lord Invocatus charges that guard squad. Here comes the pain. Nick overwatches with his Hellhound. Uh, I'm spending command point, going on yep. two. Do I get it back? I do! And he's killed three of those Berserkers. However, they now get their Blood Surge ability and actually close an additional D6 inches. Now I'm looking for a six on them. Oh, they make it with a 12. <laughs> Come on in. And last but not least, the Exalted 8 Bound. Oh, oh no, the Exalted 8 Bound have failed their charge. Command reroll, down to three, and they still fail. Nine inch charges can still lose you game, folks. I don't think I failed this many charges in a very, very, very long time. Out of the fight phase, Lord Invocata smacks down four guardsmen with Coward's Bane, his weapon, and the Juggernaut Bladed Horn kills one more. Blah, blah, five guys remaining in that squad. All right, so the Corn Berserkers, I have the champion and another Berserker left. Movement's using gory dismemberment on his Berserkers. His sixes to wound will do mortals in addition, trying to down that tank before it flames them in combat. Oh, disappointing result. Nine wounds left on the Hellhound. All right, fighting back. Fighting, oh, I get to fight you back, right. Five hits back from the guardsman, no wounds, and the Hellhound does nothing. I think that's the end of your turn there. I believe that is. And the movement's turn two. He's got two command points to Nick's three and sits at eight points to Nick's seven. He's got six on primary, two secondary, as he's got two, bring it down. On to Nick's turn two. All right, well, let's see if I can't fight you back here. Nick scores 12 on primary to bump him up all the way to 19 to eight. Four command points for Nick. Movement has to roll for that command point. He gets it. Nick's rinse repeating with orders. It worked pretty well last time. Why change anything? Okay, my turn. Orders, I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. It worked last time. Reroll one's a hit, and let's give those Castlekin first rank fire, second rank fire. So then we're gonna go to tank orders. The tank commander is going to say, gunners kill on sight. They all get to reroll ones. All right, I'm gonna prefect this order. I'm gonna do show them steel, show them contempt. And uh, these guys right here are gonna get uh, plus one leadership and on a six up, ignore damage. All right, so first of all, these guys are gonna fall back in the moving phase. Just move a full six inches. Nick moving up here into the center objective, just daring moving to get close. These guys are gonna move backwards to try to take out these guys, I think. The Bulgren are gonna move up. And they're gonna move into the crater. And the Commissar is gonna move up with an advance roll of <laughs> one. one. Uh, the Rogal Dorn will move up slightly. The tanks will do a little bit of a shuffle as the plasma tank drives around and the command tank drives up <laughs> and touches the building so I can shoot through this window. The company command squad is going to advance forward. Advance the company command squad two inches. So they're just gonna move up here. We're right at the center of all this mess. So end of your movement phase, Nick, because I know there's probably another Kashkin bomb coming in. Yeah. So I'm gonna spend two of my blood tithe points for spiteful nullification and give my army a five up to ignore mortal wounds. This is definitely a good tool, especially when you're dealing with armies that have a way of dishing out mortal wounds. Movement phase done, time for some shooting. Are you ready for this? Yep. That five up to ignore the mortals is gonna come in really handy because I'm about to do the Kashkin bomb. The Kazra can do their thing again. Nick's down to two command points. Four of them are going to go into the eight bound. Two of them are going to go into the spawn. And two of them are going to go into the Lord of Skulls. The pistol's going into the, uh, the spawn. spawn. So let's do the spawn first. Spawn goes down. That's another blood tithe point. All right, and then the two into the Lord of Skulls. Yep. Four, five, six. Give me some mortal wounds. Two mortal wounds. Two hits that turn into one more wound. And two mortal wounds. And two mortal wounds. Uh, he takes all five. Excellent, five wounds, I'll take that. Yeah. Well done, Kasergan. Zerkers go down to the chem cannon. That's another blood tithe point. All right, so the rest of the Kasergan go into those. Eight bound. Eight bound. Uh, I get three mortal wounds. Woo. See if these can wound on fives. All right. For the five saves, looking for four ups. Got one of them. Got one. And then see if you can ignore the mortals. I uh, ignore one. Five damage, so kills, kills one, one and, and brings one. down to one wound. All right, these infantry into them. See if I can kill them. All right, last guns. 
My wounds? There we go. So close. All right, we're gonna go point blank range with the Plasma Executioner into the Avocado. Plasma Executioner fires into Lord Invocatus, down to two wounds left. Command reroll fails. Two command points left for Nick and Mubin. All right, well, got him down to two wounds at least. All these guys, everything, Lord of Skulls, let's kill it. Tank Commander with the big giant gun. Big boom. Lord of Skulls is in trouble. That relic battle cannon can do some work. So he's down to nine wounds remaining. Can the, the Vulcan Mega Bolter take you down? Ooh, the Stormlord chews away at the Lord of Skulls, leaves him on a single wound. Can the Rogaldorn tank finish it off? This is where it wins. Yeah. Okay, well, I can do this. I can do this. Oppressor cannon. Here comes the Rogaldorn battle tank takes down the Lord of Skulls. Oh, <gasps> can you explode? On a six. Oh! Yay! Blood for the blood god. How big is that explosion? 2d6 inches. I see two of my units in possibly range of there. Oh, it's a nine. No! So it's going to hit Karn and those poor, poor... Guardsman in the middle. Guardsman right here? Oh no. I'm gonna do Karn first, cause ow. He takes one. Oh. He gets to shrug it on a five. He doesn't shrug it, so he'll take he takes his one. He takes one. And then D6 into the guard squad. Oh. <laughs> That's also two blood tithe points. Mubin is up to nine. Mubin spending three blood tithe on rage fueled invigoration, takes him down to six. He's still got enough to bring back Angron for next turn. A charge phase. <laughs> Oh no, the Plasma Cutioner is using Crush Them into Lord Invocatus. I'm gonna run him over with a tank. You betcha I do, and I'm gonna run you over with my treads. All right, in close combat, charging in, crush them. Uh, oh yeah, here we go, all of them hit. Looking for threes. Threes, sixes, mortal wound. I got a mortal wound and one, two, three, four saves. So you only have two wounds left. I know. I feel one. You're not gonna make a point reroll it. I'm not gonna come out point reroll it. Oh, because if he dies, you get another blood tithe. Ignoring mortal wounds on a five. Nope. He's dead. I got him! Uh-oh, Lord Avocado. Let him die for the blood tithe points, and Mubin goes up to eight. Angron only costs six. He's back, baby! Mubin spends his six points on Angron to bring him back, and his remaining two blood tithe points on Pile the Skulls. That's gonna get him four victory points. I've managed to kill the Lord of Skulls. I've managed to kill the Lord Invocatus. I got control of this game. However, to be honest, I'm still terrified of Angron. So at the end of Nick's turn, Nick has 16 on primary. He's got four on inflexible command, three on boots on the ground, and six on assassination to have 13 on secondary. Puts him at 29 points and one command point. Mubin sits at 12 points with two command points. However, it's about to be his turn three and Angron is back on the table. Let's see the red angel shed some blood. Emperor, are you listening? I don't know what else I can promise. Mubin will only gain a command point here, turn three, as Angron's off the table on a four up, and he succeeds again. Mubin sits at 16 points, the Knicks 29. However, Angron is back. So, the movement phase, Karn's gonna move up a little bit. Berserker's action to retrieve data. The eight bound are closing in on those guardsmen. I think they're not long for this world. And it's that time of the day. Oh no. And here comes Angron, baby. So, no shooting, straight to the charge phase. Oh, the eight bound, get in barely. Karn, into those guys in the middle. Karn would like some skulls. Karn wants it. Karn makes a big 10 inch charge. And now the important one. Multi-charge into both those tanks. I'm gonna overwatch with a chem cannon. As you should. Ooh, Ooh. six shots. Ooh, the chem cannon is shrugged off. Bring it. Nine? Nine is in. Nine's in, because... Here comes the red angel. He's in. We're going to go with Angron first. You want to do Angron first? Go for uh, it. How are you going to split it up? Looks like Mubin's going to split up Angron's attacks. He has so many. Why wouldn't you? On the charge, I go from 10 to 11 attacks. I'm going to drop five into the... Hellhound. Five in the Hellhound. Six into the Illumin Rust. Tank. And these are coming in at strength 15. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with the Hellhound first. Okay, on the Hellhound. Look for twos. And then twos again. Uh, that's all of them. Minus AP one. four. Okay, it goes right through. P3 plus three for each of them. Okay, he's dead. You can't survive I know, that. but I would still want to see. <laughs> okay. However, the Hellhound does blow up on a five. Don't blow up. Blow up. It explodes! Oh my god, it explodes. It does D3 mortal wounds to Angron. 
Come one. on. Can I ignore it? I can! Oh. Two dead guardsmen and three mortals to the Lehman Russ. Two blood tie for Mubin. Lehman Russ is down to 10 wounds remaining. Perfect. And then into the Lehman Russ. Lehman Russ taking a smacking now. Two wounds go through. Nope. Down it goes. Three blood tithe now. And then I'm gonna consolidate into <laughs> those poor guardsmen. Who then get to hit you? The eight bound munch up those Kazakhan really dead. More blood tithe points. Movement's up to four. And then they'll consolidate in and take that objective. Karn doing some murdering. <laughs> Karn is doing some work. Up to five blood tithe already. <laughs> and then these little guard are gonna kill Angron. And they hit you once. <laughs> they actually wound you. He laughs at them. <laughs> Morale test over here. Oh, you do? They fail. No. The last two guys. Survive? <gasps> One is left. What a big turn for Moobin. He's got 12 on primary, 19 on secondary, as he's just piling up the bring it down and spending extra blood tide points to get pile the skulls. He sits at 31 to 29 at the end of his turn three as we head into Nick's turn. I go up to two, you go up to- I go up to four, because my to four command back. points. Four on primary takes Nick up to 33, and he's got his work cut out for him. He's got an angry, angry demon Primark in his face, but he's got all the guns. If Nick manages to take down Karn and Angron, I think that's gonna be game. Take orders. Gunners kill on sight. First rank fire, second rank fire on the last infantry unit I've got left. This lone guy runs away as fast as he can. The lone guardsman readies his shovel in defiance. And these guys with their first rank fire, second rank fire, stay exactly where they are. Sentinel is gonna move up to here. The Bulgren are gonna move up to here. The Rogel Dorn tank moves up. Sentinel into Karn. D3 shots. I get three shots. Oh, Karn is pasted, but not by his own plasma gun this time, someone else's. Four blood type points though. All these gotta fire, guys are gonna fire into those. See if I can't kill a couple of them. Oh yeah. Canadians open up on the eight bound. Can they down them? They do. That is another blood type point for Moobin. He's up to five. If Angron dies, he can just bring it back next turn again. Stormlord, big giant tank into Angron. Uh oh, hot dog. Angron takes the last cannon to the face. Nope, takes it. D6. Ingrid's down to three wounds. Only three wounds left. <laughs> and then 20 Vulcan Mega Blaster shots. Still four ups. Three wounds left and down he goes. That's two blood tithe up to seven and he's gonna come back next turn. This is getting silly. So with that, at the end of your shooting phase, I spend six, guess who's coming back? <laughs> That's so funny. Nick ends that turn with 43 points, 20 on primary and 23 secondary. He's got eight inflexible commands, six boots on the ground, and nine on assassination. He hasn't scored assassination for Angron yet because it's not the end of the game and he keeps coming back. Angron keeps coming back over and over and over. This is the greatest. On to turn four and... As we head into turn four, Mubin's gonna have to roll for his command point and fails, so we have four command points to three, and Mubin's in trouble. All he's got is Berserkers and Jackals, but oh yeah, Angry Ron comes back in. I've almost got this game, but Angron's coming back. I can't do anything about him. Here he is. Didn't, didn't, did he go for a smoke? Like, where'd he go? Out for milk? He just keeps coming back. You know what, because I can, I'm pretty sure at least a few of those Berserkers are within 12 inches of that lone guardsman. Try to shoot him. All right, Commander. pistols into here. Pistols sure. into the lone guardsman. Berserkers kill a guardsman with pistols up to two blood tithe. All right, charge phase. Okay, who are you gonna charge with anger on? Oh. This is huge. Ooh, big choices here for movement in the charge phase. Who does he charge? Blood tithe does equal victory points and potentially bring in your guy back. We're gonna multi-charge the Bulgren and the Sentinel. Yeah, of course yep. you are. Why not? I'm not gonna overwatch. Nope. Oh, his charge fails. Command reroll down to three, but now he's in. And smash. He's gonna go put, throw five attacks into the Sentinel and six into the Bulgren because. Bring it. I'm gonna go into the Sentinel first. All right. Hits with everything. Sentinel dies. Up to four blood tie. Bulgren. Bulgren. Two. Ooh, the Bulgren take four wounds at AP4 and D3 plus three, all dead. Up to five blood tithe already. And then he goes into the Dorn. Dun, 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 dun. Charged in, killed a bunch of stuff, tagged his Dorn. That's gonna die next. 
Angron's back in my lines again. I think I can take him out, but I'm... But if I take him out, I'm just giving him more blood points. He's just gonna bring him back again. Movement's turn four sees him gain two on primary only and one more on bring it down to bring him up to 38. Nick turn four now up to four command points for both players, orders full throttle on the tank to steal the objective and hopefully shoot those berserkers off it. And I think that relic battle can has got the capability to do so. And they're actually gonna order move, move, move. The two, uh, these guys over here. <laughs> Hello! The Commissar is just gonna walk through this building and take this objective by himself. The company command squad's gonna advance. Oh, they go 12. This will give me extra points. Oh, getting to the middle. These guys with move of move make it all the way to here. Taking that objective. I can see this with a Vulcan Mega Volker. Shooting phase, the Stormlord paced those Berserkers dead. Mubin's got six blood tithe again, so if Angron goes down, he can come back. This tank can now see your jackals hiding in the back. So this guy's gonna try to take him out. D6 plus three shots. And I hit on threes. Relic Battle Cannon does some work and pulverizes those jackals. Now, now it's all down to the Rogaldorn can it kill Ang Angron. Oppressor Cannon. Looking for four ups. Cannon. Mubin's got to spend a command point to save that wound or Angron dies. He does, and he's down to four wounds. Okay, I wasn't able to kill you! <laughs> nope, but ah. it means he gets to attack you first. But hitting on twos. Uh, only on fours, but I still get five at AP four. I've got six ups. I fail them all. <laughs> uh, 15 minimum. Or sorry, no, 20 minimum. <laughs> nope. Does it explode? Oh! And it does, it's actually a big tank. Is it the it does, D6? It does D6. Oh, you could kill him. It does D6 damage. It does six oh, freaking damage. Door. Uh, I, I still ignored three of them. So he's still alive. He's still alive with two. <laughs> Angron has been doing some work. He has. <laughs> Spending three to gain five points immediately on Pile of Skulls takes him down to five. Morale phase, he uses two command points on Insane Bravery, and that leaves the Jackals passing that morale and moving with only one command point. And in Nick's turn, Nick's up 53 to 46. 26 primary and 27 secondary for Nick to 18 primary, 28 secondary for Moobin. This is such a back and forth game. Move turn five, and he's got five blood type points, using them on martial excellence for exploding sixes in combat. Angry Ron is gonna smack him a Stormlord. In the command phase though, yeah. because I can, yeah. I don't know why, but just in case he survives, he's going to use his wrathful presence yep. and won't let you fall back, for whatever reason. I do have to get there first. So I gotta move up eight inches. That's fitting, eight inches. That Stormlord going into turn five. That's the only real points I've got to score here. Is going to charge the Stormlord with anger? Absolutely. Oh, All right, it's time to end this. I'm going to charge that Stormlord and I'm going to kill it if it's the last thing I do. I'm going to end this farce right here, right now. Overwatch, Vulcan Mega Bolter. I've only got two rooms left. I can do this. Ha, last cannon's one hit. <laughs> And it wounds. Four up. He's okay. Oh, oh, oh. Heavy bolters. Boom. Uh, one. Only one. Oh, it's right. Auto, it automatically wounds. Oh, yeah, it auto wounds. I don't need to roll the wound. Ooh. Heavy bolter takes you out. Not if I can't reroll it. <laughs> <laughs> nope, still takes him out. Angron dies to a heavy bolter? What a silliness. He killed me with a heavy bolter. Angron died to a heavy bolter. But he'll be back next time. But that still gets me two blood tithe points. End of my phase, I'm gonna spend those two and score another point for Pile the Skulls. With that, I believe that is a good game, sir. <laughs> Angron's ridiculous. Angron is fantastic. Looks like that's gonna end the game. Mupin's gonna finish the game with 47 total points, 18 primary, 29 secondary. And Nick is gonna finish with 38 primary, 31 secondary to take him to 69, 79, 57. Your winner and vengeance for Armageddon, Guard Tau Gene Stealer Nick. <clears throat> I mean, uh, Guardsman Nick. What an absolute slobber knocker of a game. 
Angron came back twice and laid a smackdown into a gun line that I can barely believe, and I sat here and watched it. What an absolutely fantastic game from both players. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Mubin. These new world leaders are no joke, folks. I think they're going to be one of the top armies you see on the tables in the upcoming season. Special thanks again to this episode's sponsor, GameMat.eu. GameMat.eu has everything you need ready to play right out of the box to build the battlefield of your dreams. Make sure to check out the link in the description, and as always, tell them Play On sent you. That's it for us, folks. As always, this is your host, JT McDowell, saying, until the next time we see you in the far-flung future of a grim dark universe, blood for the blood, I mean, play on. And that's the game I managed to eke out a win. Honestly, this new World Leaders Codex, so much stuff in here to unpack. Angron just kept coming back and back and back. It is a scary character, and to be honest, it was a ton of fun to have that mechanic go in. And so many different things to try out. I can't wait for the next iteration of a list I can put together with the new world leaders. Blood type points, the blood surge abilities, there's so much, it's so good. I can't wait to play them again. Are you gonna hold me to what I said before? Absolutely. Does that, does that mean I can't play Tau again? Um, okay.